Hi, here's the message for August the 23rd. If you've ever taken a tour of New York City, the guides will often get you to think about all those enormous, tall, heavy skyscrapers. Then they'll ask you how the ground on Manhattan Island is able to support the weight of all those skyscrapers. Then the guides will tell you the secret. Manhattan, it turns out, is blessed with a very firm, strong bedrock. Skyscrapers cannot be built just anywhere. To support them, they need to be able to have a foundation that is stable, solid rock. Today's gospel passage from Matthew chapter 16 gets us to think about the foundation of our lives and what we are constructed on. What is your bedrock? What is your life built on? What is the foundation upon which you are based? By profession, Jesus grew up trained by his father Joseph as a builder. And the word for Joseph and Jesus' profession in the New Testament is technon in Greek, which means builder, as in one who constructs buildings. Now, in popular notion, we often think of Jesus as a carpenter. But in truth, Jesus would have worked more with stones when he helped his father construct buildings. They would have constructed a stone foundation upon bedrock and then built up exterior and interior walls also of stone. Timbers and wood were used back then only for the roof. I think that's probably why Jesus talks so often about this image of rocks and stones whenever he had parables or in his messages. In today's gospel message, Jesus uses the image of stone for construction once again. Only this time, Jesus talks about his disciples as stones, as human stones, if you will. As stones whom he is using to construct his faith community. The occasion for all this is, the Simon, is Simon Peter's profession of faith in Christ Jesus. When Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? Jesus then followed up the question with, but who do you say that I am? He asked his disciples. And the disciple Simon answered him. Simon said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. When Simon makes this profession of faith, Jesus recognizes that Simon has decided to build his life on the bedrock of Jesus as the Messiah of the living God. And because Simon has a solid foundation in the living God, Jesus realizes that he can use that kind of faith to build up a community of believers to work for him in this world. Jesus says to Simon, Blessed are you. You will henceforth be known as Petros. Petros is the word in Greek for rock. And we translate it in English as Peter. Jesus tells him, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. In other words, Jesus is telling Peter that he will use his rock of faith as a foundational stone upon which to build Jesus' church community. Peter took this commission from Jesus very seriously and became an important leader in the early Christian church. He became a prominent proponent of expanding the Christian message to all Gentiles. Peter was indeed one of those early rocks of faith, laying a foundation upon which many other rocks of faith would be added in constructing Jesus' faith community. In Peter's later letter to Christians in 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter says that all Christians should consider themselves to be living stones, being built up into a spiritual house. 
Have you ever thought of yourself as a living stone? As a living example of faith, your faith, like Peter's, is part of a tower of faith that is being constructed throughout history. And as a living stone, I want you to consider that your life is built based upon the faith of others, and other people will also build their lives of faith based upon you. Peter was one of the early faith stones, part of the foundation of early Christian history. Other Christians followed, it, followed and added their stones on top of his witness and the witness of others. This tower of faith kept getting built up higher and higher until it reached the part in history that came to us. Then you added your tower you added your stone to this tower of faith, laying it upon the foundation of faith that came before you, supported by the witness of countless parents and grandparents, friends, teachers, and mentors in preceding generations. And as you add your living stone to God's wall of faith, know that others will come after you to build upon what you have continued and that you will be foundational for them. As a living stone, you will support them in their faith, just as you have been supported by the living stones beneath you. But remember, just like those big skyscrapers in Manhattan, the sturdiness of the whole structure is only as good as the bedrock upon which it is built. For us as Christians, as living stones, our bedrock is none other than the living God himself, as testified by Peter in his great profession of faith. Our living, loving, gracious God is our bedrock. The foundation of our lives is built on nothing less. God is the bedrock for our living stones. So please, for a moment, reflect upon the bedrock of your life. Is God a vital part of the foundation for your life? Is God's agenda foundational for you? God's agenda of spreading love and mercy, of seeking justice for the oppressed, of freeing those who are captive to self-centeredness and hatred, and showing them the love of God so that they can love others. How much of God's love is expressed in your life as you seek to be a living stone for God? How much of God's mercy and grace is communicated to you, through you, to others? How much faith is expressed through your words and your actions? Just as when Jesus looked at Simon and called him Petros, rock, so too does Jesus look at each of us as being a rock for him. Jesus sees that you possess this, this vast potential within you to be a living stone for God's kingdom. Jesus considers that you, yes you, are excellent building material. In God's eyes, your life is a wonderful living stone, waiting to be used in the construction of something that is bigger than any of us. God wants to use you as a support and a foundation for spreading the love of God in this world. So how do you see yourself? How do you respond to this potential that Jesus sees in you? Do you allow yourself to be used as a living stone for God? Will you allow the living God to do something mighty in the world through you? Will you be part of grace God's great construction project to redeem this world. Will you be a rock, a Petros, a living stone for God? As you consider those questions, I urge you to drill down to the bedrock in your life. And when you hit solid rock, which is God's enormous love for you, may you find yourself strengthened. 
Maybe you find something, something that is so solid that you are able to construct your life on its foundation. It may then be used by God as a living stone to be the foundation of love for others, just like how those who have gone before you have been a foundation for you. You are God's living stone. And using you as a component, God will construct something great and wonderful, a tower of faith and love in this world of need. Amen. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, use us as living stones for your kingdom. May our lives be based upon the bedrock of God's love, so that we do our part in the construction of your kingdom in this world. As living stones, may we testify to you in our lives, through our words and our actions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.